Hey folks, so what I wanted to do now was go a little more in depth into metering. It's something I basically skipped over in the first video because I'd already set my levels for this tutorial, but this is an important thing to know. Oftentimes you'll be having to try to hit exact specs as far as the peak or the RMS that you're trying to hit that you may receive in recording specs, and we don't want your audio to get rejected. So we wanna go a little deeper into metering so that we can hit these exact numbers, right? So uh, I'm gonna use uh, our home recording specs as of early May 2020. Uh, your specs may differ, but these are actually great starting specs, especially if you don't have any specs and you're just trying to hit some good numbers. Th these are good uh, numbers to start with. So uh, this will be a great tutorial, even if you uh, have different specs or uh, none at all. Uh, but we'll use uh, those home recording specs as a, an example. So let's dive in. Uh, we want to see the mix window, first of all. So you want to hit F3 on the keyboard. That'll toggle it on and off, if you remember. So we're looking at a mix window right now, but uh, the meter that we wanna see is quite small and scrunched compared to the real estate we gave up for the mix window. So here's some tips to uh, help out with that. Go ahead to the left side of the mix window, you'll see this detach gadget. Go ahead and click that, it'll make the mix window a floating window that we can resize and position wherever and however we want. And it gives us back the screen real estate we lost uh, from this window, right? So a few things to do, first of all, are that if any of these extraneous things are on, besides the tracks, um, they light up these blue gadgets over here. Any blue gadgets you can click and that'll turn off these extraneous displays so we can just see our tracks. Um, if you can see the inserts or the sense like this, real quick way to fix that is go ahead and click on the small large gadget and that'll get rid of your inserts and sends. And then you can just size the window to uh, fit the height of your screen. And we can't get rid of this uh, main output, but we can get it sort of off screen there. And so now we have a nice big uh, meter that's always on the screen and it's, uh, it's pretty big so we can be pretty accurate about things, uh, hopefully, right? Are there some more things we wanna do though? Right click on it, select peak hold, right click on it, select peak RMS, right click again and select RMS length three seconds. Now what we have here is something more uh, along the lines of what we wanna look at, which is that we can see, as, as you can see, uh, that there's a little peak indicator here. So we don't have to try to follow this with our eyes. We can see right where the peak is. And actually, if you click in here and, and hold your mouse at any one location, it'll tell you what that location is, right? Um, on the left side of that uh, pop-up. It's even uh, showing what the peak hold is. Every time I move the mouse, that will update as well, right? So we can see exactly where we are. Um, and down here, this yellow line is the RMS measured over three seconds. Um, in the specs we're using today, it, it actually gives some numbers uh, for the RMS. And what it means by that is the RMS of the entire audio file. Well, Studio One doesn't have the analytical tools to measure the RMS of an entire audio file. So the best we can do is three seconds. Now the RMS of the audio file may be a decibel lower than that at most, but we can adjust and uh, I'll go into that in a bit, right? So let's pull out our specs here. These are written by Sarah, our engineer, and uh, what we're looking for are specs on recording. Here we go, recording levels. Make sure to record an optimal level and pay attention to your gain staging to avoid clipping. Yeah, we're not clipping. We're not anywhere near zero decibels up here, so we're good. Uh, but here it gets more interesting. The RMS of the raw audio you deliver to us should ideally be between negative twi 25 decibels, but no lower than negative 30, with peaks not ex exceeding negative six decibels. So this would probably be the most important thing that we don't want our peak, that's our green uh, uh, indicator up here to exceed negative six decibels. And, you know, we want our, ideally, we want our RMS to be in these ranges. What we don't want to do is go so far below uh, these guidelines that there's not enough uh, good audio information to work with. So while we're trying to get, uh, trying not to exceed negative six, we don't want to, you know, be peaking so low uh, that our RMS is well below negative 30. Okay, so that, you know, so sort of over explains that. One tip that Sarah gave me, though, is that she tells home narrators that if you try to hit peaking at around negative 12 or so, then that will both net you an RMS in this range uh, by just rule of thumb awesomeness, but it also keeps you way far away from the negative six decibels that you're trying to avoid at all costs. So that's actually exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to get my peaks at around negative 12, not necessarily 
completely under, uh, but uh, just around negative 12 so that we hit these RMSs uh, best as we can. So I'm gonna bring out my script. That's a good uh, tip is that you wanna be doing the material you're actually gonna be performing at its actual level uh, when you're doing sound check. This is something I've <laughs> dealt with with uh, you know, actors and musicians alike is that you know, they, they do a sound check and they're just doing something. And then when they actually go to record the material, it's suddenly a lot louder. And the engineer's like, hey, what was that all about? And it's like, well, I'm really playing now. So uh, as, as obnoxious as it, is, as it is, you wanna really be performing um, you know, while you're doing your sound check. Um, you know, so that you're getting an accurate uh, read out of what it's going to be when you start recording. So I've got my script here. Uh, let me lean into the mic and let's see what kind of levels we get. Introduction. Folklore Legends. Now I can tell right away it's too high. We're peaking way above negative six. So I'm going to bring that down um, quite a bit on my uh, interface. Uh, your interface is probably different, but um, I'm plugged into one, so I'm going for the gain knob on channel one. I'm bringing it down a little bit. Okay, let's try again. Introduction. Folklore, yeah, that's still quite a bit high. You know, it got, it got into the yellow there, which indicates above negative six, which we're trying not to do for these specs. So I'm gonna bring it down just a bit more. Introduction. Folklore, legend, well, that's closer, but we're still mostly getting into the negative nine area, so I'm bringing it down a bit more. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, ooh, close, but just a touch lower. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fi Oh, that is so utterly close. I'm gonna bring it down just a touch. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairies. So that's exactly what we're looking for. It went uh, a little above negative 12 there, but it's bouncing around there. So hopefully that means our RMS falls uh, in range. We can kind of test that a bit if we just record a little bit. Um, and then play it back and take a look at what our RMS uh, yellow line is doing. So let me just record a bit real quick. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairy tales have followed childhood through the ages. For every healthy youngster has a wholesome and instinctive love for stories fantastic, marvelous, and manifestly unreal. All right, so we go back to the beginning of the session and play that back, except that we want to disarm the track or else it will be giving us the meter of what's coming through the microphone, not what's being played back. So we do this. Introduction. All right. Folklore, so we see, legends, yeah, myths and our peak is, have you know, just through the getting around 12, for sometimes every it's significantly below, sometimes it's just above. That's great. And so what is our RMS doing here? And we can click unreal. here and follow along. Introduction. Folklore, what's going legends, on here. myths, and fairy tales so, have followed childhood negative twenty four point nine, right? So, like I said, it's going to read out a little higher, maybe than what the RMS of the actual unreal. audio file will be. But we're getting ranges. I'm seeing negative twenty four, negative twenty seven for RMS that should follow fall within these guidelines here exactly. If you you know imagine that maybe about a decibel will be lost off of that. And we're definitely not hitting anywhere near negative six, but we definitely are hitting negative 12 with our peaks. So that's great. We should be able to record with those settings as long as you don't move your mic around, get farther away from it, go completely off mic. Uh, you know, if you keep your uh, settings and your uh, situation, your gear in pretty much the same situation, uh, then you should be able to use those uh, settings to record the rest of the book. Okay, so one thing I wanted to demonstrate real quickly is just levels that are just too darn low, both by the standards in these example guidelines, but also just generally when recording at 16-bit, you don't want to be peaking um, that low because uh, at that point you start actually throwing away bits out of your 16-bit and you start recording at 13-bit, 12-bit, um, with every six decibels that you go. So you don't want to be too low. So for example, let's uh, check myself right now. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairy tales have followed childhood throughout the ages. See, so as you can see, we're not nearly hitting negative 12. We're actually introduction, maybe around 18 or so. And so uh, 18 divided by three by six is three. So we're losing three whole bits off of uh, the 16-bit recording quality um, that low. So we definitely want to uh, gain this up uh, a significant amount. So I'm going to try that now. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairy tales. Well, that's close to our negative 12 uh, uh, goal. 
but it still needs a little more game. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairy tales. So there we go. That's a nice healthy level coming up from a level that's too low. Um, so that's about it. That's uh, metering in Studio One, uh, both what to do if the level's too high and too low, and how to you know follow these specs as best you can uh, given Studio One's uh, capabilities. So another thing I wanted to discuss was routing. Uh, this is an important topic, especially if you're using Studio One Prime, because unfortunately Studio One Prime only supports two inputs and two outputs at the same time. So doing something like a headphone mix through another set of stereo outputs on your DAW would not be possible with Studio One Prime. It does give you some options. If you go to the input selector here, you get audio IO setup. And so you can use any of the inputs on your DAW. You can just only use two of them at a time. So if you wanted to use, uh, you know, four, for example, then you'd have to set all of these up to use four, right? Um, now, I, can, I think I can hit that, and you guys should still hear me. Uh, but it, uh, as you see, now we're not getting any input into Studio One. So I'll put those back as they were. Um, if in Prime you try to, you know, do something with a third input, now we're trying to utilize three inputs and hit apply. It doesn't even give you a proper error message, it just removes it, you know, which is sort of rude. Um, but if you have the full version, then you can click add mono or add stereo to add additional inputs and select which input from your DAW you want to use. Outputs on the full version, this looks the same as inputs where you can add mono and stereo, but we can't because this is Studio, uh, Studio One Prime, so we just have the main. Now, I'm going to assume uh, that we've added another uh, output for uh, headphone mix or something and that we're in uh, the full version of uh, Studio One. Um, if that's the case, then you can open up your mix window, and right here in sends, uh, you can s uh, make a send to send something to a, uh, a, a headphone mix, right? We only have main right now, and it actually does let me send to main, even though that's the output we're already going to. But that's the basic workflow if you wanted to uh, route to different outputs in the full version of Studio One. Unfortunately, you can't do that in Prime. All right, thanks.